Hey friends, Sarah here. I hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see, I don't usually introduce myself, which, which I realized uh, at the beginning of these. So hi, I'm Sarah Ray Werner. Um, I host these create-alongs, I guess. Um, <laughs> Yeah, hi, welcome to either you're watching on Facebook or Twitch, welcome to the stream. Um, my name is Sarah Ray Warner. I am the creator of several different podcasts. I create the Right Now podcast. I create the audio drama Girl in Space. I am also a writer, a reader, a lot of books behind me. I've got a cat here. Her name is Midori and she hates being held, I know. So, welcome, hi, yes. Hello, Augie is here, Poxy is here, HL is here, hello, hello, oh, there's so many wonderful people here. Tim is here and says, if you're on Facebook and it's being slow, come hang out with us on Twitch. It's over at twitch.tv slash Sarah Ray Werner. Oh, Takara, thank you. Takara says, are you feeling better? I had to go to the doctor earlier this week and Midori just dipped her tail in my tea. Here. here. <laughs> No, we're gonna just go. Thank you. Thank you for asking, Takara. Um, yes, I am feeling. I'm feeling so much better. Thank you for asking. Um, Marissa says, "Loving this intro." Um, so yeah. So yeah. Yep. Yep. Steffers is here. Hello, Steffers. Hello, Knight the Coward. Hello, Alana Paw Patroller. Hello, Charlie. Hi, Naked Acres is here. Hello, Cassandra is here. Carrie is here. Marissa and Mike. Hi, another book lover is here. Skit is here. Oh, there's so many people here. If I don't uh, mention your name, Forsaken Fallen is here. Hello. Um, if I missed you, I'm sorry, and I greet you. Sometimes the comments go really fast. Um, oh, Anne is here. Hello, Anne. Melissa is here. Melissa, hello. Hi. Um, if this is your first time here, welcome. If this is your second or third or fourth or fifth, or a millionth time here, welcome. I don't know if you're welcome right now. So earlier Midori was trying to get, she likes to sit on the top of my chair and she tried to climb up the chair, except she accidentally climbed up me and sunk her claws into my side and it hurt a lot. So I am I love you Midori, but I'm not feeling very warm and snuggly right now. Um, but I do love you, even though you hurt me. So um, how is everybody doing? <laughs> Peachy Writer's here. Transcaster Radio is here. Lynette is here. Hello. Hi. Oh, fantastic. Hello and welcome. Um, yeah, hi. Okay. Um, so during these streams, um, I invite you to create along with us. Usually we talk a little bit in the intro and then we jump into creating for about an hour and that can be on whatever you want. But in the meantime, I want to hear how you're doing. Um, yes, I need to tell Midori to be nice. Um, yes, yep, yes. Cat scratches, yes, they hurt. Oh, kitty bubbles. I love the name bubbles. <gasps> Ooh, Peachy Writer says, I just went on a nice long winter walk. My mind is feeling free and ready to write. Um, I'm going to get this very wrong probably, but I remember reading, was it Lao Tzu, Diary of a Madman, in which he talks about free and easy wandering as a way to uh, reach some sort of enlightenment. Oh, I'm so ignorant. It's been like 10 years since I read that book. Um, Falling Hoshi is here. Hello. <gasps> and you you recorded an episode of your podcast. Excellent. Congrats. Hi, Liliana. I'm so glad you're here. Got a leftover. I love this. <laughs> I got a leftover candy cane from the holidays and I'm ready to write. I love it. Yes. A good free and easy wander is good for your soul. Um, oh, yes. Maybe, Lucian. Maybe. Maybe. It's a blur. It's a blur. That was like 20 years ago. Yep. Uh, Augie says, I'm finding myself wanting to work on multiple things at once to get stuff done faster, but ultimately getting overwhelmed and doing nothing but busy work. I also struggle to do more than one thing at a time in general. I want to put all of my focus on one thing at a time. Any tips? 
Oh my gosh. Well, starting with one thing at a time is a really good place to start. Um, sometimes we get, and I think I actually talk about this in an upcoming, either an upcoming newsletter or an upcoming right now podcast episode, but we get um, decision paralysis because we see like our to-do list has like record the next three episodes of the right now podcast, finish the season of girl in space, finish writing it. Uh, you know, respond to these 800 emails, um, do a live stream, do this, do that. You have 10 calls today. And it's like, it can be really overwhelming until we focus on one thing. But the problem there is how do we focus on one thing? Um, if anyone here has tips on focusing, that is very welcome. Um, Yes. So I guess any any tips for Augie on focusing on one thing at a time? Um, for me, it also came with how I think about my day. I used to think that like my to-do list for the week or for the month or for the rest of eternity was my to-do list for that day. And so I'd be like, oh, I need to work a little bit on everything to make progress on everything so that I can check everything off of my to-do list every day. And that just wasn't practical. So choosing one thing to do that day and sticking with it um, can be very, very effective as well. Ooh, Naked Acre says I'm completely immersed in book binding this past week. 28 new blank books glued up and curing. It's been so cheering under the gray skies we've been having. I love that. Yes, Forsaken Fallen is having some self-care Taco Bell. Work has been a nightmare this week. I'm hoping to catch up with some writing tonight. Oh boy, enjoy it. Enjoy that Taco Bell. I hope that you're also able to catch up on some writing too as well. Writing too as well. So we're being a little redundant, but maybe that is okay. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you, Rebecca. I'm I'm feeling better. Thank you. You're you're all so wonderful. Yeah, Tim says multitasking is not doing any one thing very well. Yeah, um, Jack of all trades, master of none, I think is the saying, and it's true for so many things. Um, multitasking for me is pretty much impossible. I am a single tasker and even then I have trouble focusing. Um, so I totally understand. Takara says I'm good, but it's been a long week. It's only Wednesday. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I hope the rest of your week goes a lot more smoothly, Takara. And he says, hi, all. I got a shiny new notebook today, so I'm excited. The old one still has a few pages to fill, so it's just in time. Ooh, I love that. I love starting a new notebook. It is such a great feeling. Mm. Skid says, I need to work on the second season of one of my podcasts, but I just have zero desire to write it. Ugh. This really resonates with me. Um, do you ever have... Do you have a backup project? It's so interesting that this conversation is going on at the same time as Augie's question. Um, because in Augie's case, it's good to just like pick one thing and focus on it. But in your case, if you don't want to focus on the one thing you have, do you need to think about a side project? Do you need to think about like, oh, this is a good time to knock out some busy work? I love you, but I'm going to put you over here. Um, Please know that I, I understand this feeling and maybe this is a time to and maybe even in start instead of like starting a whole new project, maybe this is also a time to do some journaling and reflection and even thinking about why do I have zero desire to do this? And if I have zero desire to do it, you know, what does that mean? Like, should I postpone this season and work on something I am more interested in? Or is there something that is particularly stubborn that's in my way, like a mindset? Or maybe you know that in season two, you know, you have to kill off a character and you're really reluctant to do that. So getting at the heart of why you have zero desire to write it might be your next step. Um, let's see. Oh, really? <laughs> Thanks, Anne. Anne says I gave you a shout out. Oh, thank you. That's lovely. Yeah, Naked Acres says I'm a month behind on my self-publishing goal. No one to blame but myself. That's okay. Do you, do you give yourself, 
when you fall behind on a goal, when you do not accomplish what you wanted to accomplish, what do you do? Do you yell at yourself? Do you kind of double down for the next month? Um, do you forgive yourself and move forward? How do you best deal with that? Oh, Tania! Hi, Tania's here. I'm so happy you're here. Tania, I just wanted to let you know. So Tania is one of my students in, in podcast now. Um, I did a live stream there this morning. And Tania, I talked about that wonderful um, entry that you wrote uh, in, our, in our Facebook group. So thank you for being beautifully big hearted and honest and authentic and um, for giving us that gift of insight. So thank you for that. Ooh, yes. Knight the Coward says ADHD here. I cannot help it. I'm either doing five things or one for several hours straight to make the best pro progress. I have to do the pick one thing only. I am absolutely the same way. I need to pick one thing and then I need like a, oh, this is going to sound ridiculous. So don't judge me. I need like a focuser. So I need like a cup of tea so that I can drink the tea and maintain my focus or drink coffee and maintain my focus. Um, you know, the, my for me, like my focus can be anything, but I prefer that it not have a ton of calories. Like, oh yeah, you know, my my focus used to be, I used to have this giant bag of M&Ms at my desk and I would like let M&Ms melt under my tongue. And then I hit my mid thirties and I was like, oh, my metabolism doesn't work anymore. And so now I drink tea and coffee um, as my focus. So I really appreciate you saying that. Thank you. Tim says, I try to use my time based on how much and what kind of energy I have that particular day. Yes, that is very important, is realizing the type of energy that you have to expend. Oh, Takara says, a friend unfriended me. Um, I don't know if Jimmy's here, but Jimmy's newsletter today, um, he was also talking about... Um, losing, losing a friend. Um, and it's hard. And Takara, I'm so sorry to hear that. Welcome, John. John says, I just listened to the podcast episode about journaling. I've heard about morning pages before. Today, I didn't get to those until 6 p.m. Better late than never. Absolutely. Absolutely. They can be evening pages. I don't see why not. <laughs> Whatever is meaningful for you. Like, not everyone's a morning person. John, you do you. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> Ooh, Rebecca says, I love to use timers, 10 minute timers to just smash out work for a single project in those 10 minutes. And then I have a first then written down. First, I'll do 10 minutes of the first draft. Then I'll work on my flash fiction piece for 10 minutes. Absolutely. And that works well, too. Um, a lot of people use the Pomodoro method, which is, I think, 25 minutes and 25 minutes and 25 minutes. And, and then you kind of take little breaks in between. So it, it structures your day and it gives you a definite um, start and stop time. It gives you some definite time boundaries. Um, that, that works, that works really well for some people as well. Yes. Midori is in good voice tonight. She is currently smashing her head against my wrist. I don't, I don't know if you want. Hi. Oh, now, now do you, yeah. Are you, are you going to behave? Um, so yes, she's being very special today. Uh, Mike says, I wish I'm in a similar boat. I'm scripting two seasons, writing a narrative for a separate show and possibly outlining a third season. So, so Mike, how do you do this? Do you do one thing at a time or do you rotate? Um, like Rebecca was talking about, do you like rotate between projects? Um, how does that work for you? Yes. Um, let's see. Ooh, Carrie, pleasantly surprised at how productive you've been. You've been lacking lots of sleep with your tiny human. Wow, 1,200 words on Monday night and double that throughout yesterday. Fantastic, fantastic. And what has helped you do that? Is it just lots of coffee? Is it um, like separating yourself like physically or sight line wise from you and the tiny human? Um, what, has, uh, what has been helpful for you there? Yes, we got another vote here for Pomodoro Sprints. Yes, absolutely. 
Jimmy, hey, you are here. <laughs> Jimmy says, I need to change the batteries in my keyboard bef and then ostensibly the keyboard died. Another book lover says, I haven't written much this week, but today has already been better. I hope I can keep it up tonight. Well, I hope you can too. Mm, two podcasts that both need season two written. Just haven't been in a writing mood lately. I have time, but I'd like to get them done early. Ooh, ooh, that writing mood. I am familiar with that as well. You know, we were talking about focus just a little bit ago with um, with Augie and being in a writing mood. It's really hard for me to write ahead of time. I'm the kind of writer who, like, I always want to get things done early, but I don't do my best work until the last minute. And I recently... It was recently pointed out to me, and I'm going to use passive voice here because I don't 100% remember who pointed it out to me. Um, but for me, having that that deadline forces me to focus. Midori, she's rubbing her face on the. <laughs> side of my laptop. For those of you wondering, why don't I just put her in a different room? Um, this is, so we have a very small house. This is my office. It is also her, she's old and has some medical issues and we need to kind of keep her isolated. And this is the room in which she is isolated. So good. Okay. She's eating some food. Hopefully that will occupy her. Um, yeah, it's hard for me to get anything done early because I need the pressure of a deadline to focus. And so maybe, Augie, if that's a thing for you as well, understanding what the deadline is and planning out ahead of that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Cassandra says, before the holidays, I'd started using the Pomodoro method and was having some good results. I need to get back to that. Yeah, start tonight. Tonight is a great time to start doing that again. Ooh, yes, that mental brick wall. Yes. Yes. Mm. This is very interesting, too. Knight the Coward says, I have a lot of guilt, but I found the only way I can move forward is to reassess and make a new goal, even if it's the same previous goal of a page by Friday. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Marissa says, I'm having trouble maintaining the author's voice in my translation project. The first chapter was passed along to me with the warning that it is weak. I agree, but I'm struggling not to overcorrect in order to maintain his writing style. Oh, boy. Um, I don't have any experience with translation, but I do have a lot of experience with ghostwriting. When you're, it's it's kind of similar. You're, you're writing in someone else's voice. Um from maybe an outline or a conversation with them that you've had. And it's really, it can be really hard not to be too assertive, especially if you are a writer with a strong voice. It's, you know, your voice just wants to come through. It's who you are. Um, oh, and I, I totally, I understand that so much. I understand that so much. I think that for me, um, what helped me was to remember that my heart isn't in this project you know, is this isn't my, this is somebody else's book. This is not my book. And so I don't need to own it as strongly. Um, I still need to like get it done and like make it good, but this isn't a reflection of me and my heart. So it helped me to kind of have that conversation with myself. Cass, hi, Cass is listening and getting caught up on dishes. Totally valid. I see you, Cass. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm so behind in the comments, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. <laughs> yeah, look at this. We have so many amazing people here. Augie says we've broken our live watch count record. For those of you, if this is your first time uh, at tonight's stream, welcome. Hello. I'm so happy you're here. Um, this is such a meaningful time for this community to get together, to talk about our creative struggles, our writing struggles, and then to actually move forward with some kind of creativity, some kind of writing project, whatever it is that you have. So welcome. I'm so glad you're here. 
Uh, let's see. Ooh, either have trouble focusing or hyper focus. Yes, which sounds good until you realize you completely disengage with eating, drinking, or going to the restroom. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see. Oh, Mary says way back in August, I made a schedule, Monday night blog, Wednesday night's novel, Friday night social media posts, etc. Yeah, if you're the type of person who can follow a schedule like that with your creative stuff, like all the power to you. Like that is something that I'm a little bit, I'm a little jealous of that. A little jealous of that. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, thank you, Poxy. Oh, 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 posh. Thank you. Thank you, Poxy, who says, welcome, hang out. Um, oh, good. Okay, Tinia, you were there. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Okay, good, good. Yes, keep showing up here. Please know that um, for you and for any of you who are feeling like giving up, if you are feeling frustrated, if you are feeling just like you're kind of done, um, you're not. You're not. You're a creator and we all have ups and downs and um, it's hard. Creating is hard. It's hard work. It's hard to maintain. Um, I recorded a Right Now episode this morning about the blank page and how it is essentially a mirror that is really difficult for a lot of us to look into. And we have to look into that mirror every day and we don't always like what we see. Um, so, yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on there. Yes. Yeah, I like this. Alana Paw Patroller says, it's okay to also focus on other things. It's okay if you need to take a day of self-care and put your list off for a day. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Poxy says ignore my previous message. Oh, yeah, there's all these new people. Thank you. My gosh. Yes, my website is out at sarahwerner.com. It's just got all sorts of free stuff. Like that's that's basically my jam. Um, I realized that the other day, I was like, oh, I'm pushing all this traffic to my website and I'm not really selling anything. I'm just giving away stuff for free. I've got my two podcasts. I've got, um, I've got a, uh, I think the top 10 creative myths uh, that it's like an ebook that you can download. I've got a podcasting roadmap if you wanna start your own podcast. Uh, I've got a TED Talk that's out there. Um, so go to my website and consume all of my free stuff. It's there for you. Um, yeah, thanks, Poxy. You're absolutely fantastic. Yes. Yes, yes. Ooh, some people are taking webinars. I know, Midori is just, just doing her thing. Yes, what cat isn't dramatic? Amen. Yes. Let's see. Liliana says, I'm about midway, or I think I am through my novel, and I don't know when I should end the story. If everything was ideal, I would have about 300 pages, but I can't stretch out the plot that long. Do you have any tips for me to find the best length for my book and when to wrap it up? Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of different metrics you can use. So if you are, depending what, what kind of book you're writing, you might want to follow some guidelines. Now, that being said, your story can be as long or as short as you want it to be, as it needs to be, um, if you're just creating it, if you're not planning on selling and marketing it. Um, if you're just writing this for yourself, go crazy. It can be as long or as short as you want or need it to be. Um, if you are... Um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Had to had to hydrate in, in that very inconvenient uh, time slot. Um, if you want to be able to sell it, there's different word counts for like a YA novel, for a mystery, for a romance, for a you know piece of literary fiction. There's word counts. It usually goes by word count um, instead of page count. Um, but if you're doing about 250 words on a page, what's 300 pages? Oh boy, doing some math. 250 times 300. Oh, yeah. So that's 75K words. Um, that's perfect for a novella. That's perfect for uh, maybe a, and I'm not going to know all this off the top of my head. I'm going to say Google, Google those numbers. Um, 
But as, as far as finding the right place to wrap it up, if you don't want to go based on word count or page count, and I'm going to get rid of the questions so that you can actually see my face. Um, the best length is going to be, number one, is your plot in a good place? So do you have the sort of basic structure down? So you have, um, and, and it depends also if you're working with like a three act structure or a five act structure, or if you are doing the hero's journey. And if you don't have any structure like that at all, that's also okay. But what I'm trying to say is if you've set up the plot and you have action that's happening and you have a good climax and then a good resolution, all of those elements kind of need to be there in order for the story to work. You also wanna make sure in addition to the plot, and this is maybe, well, for some readers, and this is my kind of thing, but like, I like to make sure that the character arc has also completed. So has your character started in one place, learned a lesson and grown and changed as a person? Have they sort of leveled up a little bit? Um, that's also something to take a look at. So it's really hard to know when to end something. Um, I know usually I just go when it feels right. And you can develop an idea for when something feels right by just absolutely reading everything you can. The more you read, uh, especially diverse and various and different authors, the more you read, the more you'll start to internalize and develop your feeling of intuition for when it's a good time to end something um, and when it's a good time to wrap things up. So, um, yeah, this is this is really how things go, Jimmy. Sarah begins speaking about a deep and useful subject. Midori is just opera singing in the background. That's just how it goes. Um, so yeah. Mary, this is wonderful. Mary is our numbers person, I think. Um, 60 to 75K, yes, most general adults. 50 to 60K is good for younger. Fantasy, fantasy, I've seen a lot of longer fantasy, like, a lot longer. <laughs> and also when you write it, it's gonna be a little bit longer usually than when you edit it down, but yeah. Yes, Tim says endings are hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like I missed a lot here. Um, yeah, Augie says I hate endings so much. I started writing horror so I could get away with not finishing my stories. <gasps> what's that? What's that quote about endings? Um, end with an image and don't explain it. <laughs> yes, it creates tension and it makes people mad. I love it. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to put those word counts, that word count back up here. Um, for those of you who find this helpful, um, let's see. Ooh, Transcaster says I'm on hiatus from everything right now. That is understandable and completely valid. And I hope you are taking good care of yourself during your hiatus. Drink lots of water. Mm. Mm. Yeah, sticking to that schedule can be a problem. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, making the audience mad, making the audience cry. It's just what we do. It's what we do. We're doing all of this just to torment people, right? <laughs> What's everyone working on tonight? Oh, good. Okay, good. Thanks for the tips. Yes, absolutely. Outline the rest of the novel. If you want to, like, you can write the first draft of the novel completely by the seat of your pants. A lot of people do that. So if that's what you're more comfortable doing, do that. If you want to try outlining, it can be extremely helpful. Um, just in understanding what the structure is going to be, like what the different character arcs are going to be. Um, there is a really wonderful book by K.M. Wayland or Wyland, W-E-I-L-A-N-D. And she has two different books, Structuring Your Novel and Outlining Your Novel. And they're both very, very good. They're both just eBooks. Um, I don't know if there's also paper copies of them, but, um, I do own both of those and they're fantastic resources. So yeah, if that's helpful, um, good. Oh, good. Everybody's working on cool stuff. Okay. 
Let's see. Mm. Mike says with season one, I had a beginning, but I couldn't get through the middle. So I came up with an ending and I write to find out how we get there. Absolutely. Oh, that's a great way of doing it. Yes. Save the Cat writes a novel. Yes, that is a fantastic resource as well. Marissa, thank you for sharing that one. Yes, that is absolutely fantastic as well. Episode four of your audio drama. Heck yeah. Made a promo picture for your Kofi. Kofi, I never know how to say it. Fantastic. Uh, Night the Coward says, just ordering scenes for late season one and maybe a little bit of season two. Very general outlines of each scene. And I insert or remove what's appropriate as progress happens. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, these are these are coming in so fast, everyone. <laughs> these are coming in so fast. Oh, not been productive. Yes, you've been recovering. Oh my gosh. Whatever you need to do tonight, if you want to write one sentence, if you want to read a book, if you want to take a nap, if you want to have a cup of tea, Cassandra, take good care of yourself. Oh my gosh. Overcoming something like COVID is horrifying. Falling Hoshi is working on the next part of the thing I want to finish this year. Excellent, excellent. Hex Theorem says, I'm currently working on character shorts to flesh out how I feel about these characters. I love doing that. Um, let's see. Yes, Tim says, I like pantsing at the start and then outlining when I inevitably get stuck. Yes, makes a huge difference when it comes to progress. Ooh, Steffers, more space pirates. I love it. Love it. Forsaken Fallen is working on finishing a story for a submission, writing another story for a future, and editing my novella. Not at the same time. Good. Good. Uh, Peachy Writer says, I'm trying to reach my 500 word daily goal, but I'm tired. Ooh, what is the best use of your time and energy this evening? Or in the case of my Australian friends this morning. <laughs> Mary says, finishing edits of my writing retreat kit. Yes. Ooh, painting your nails. Oh, books on your nails. That sounds amazing. Carrie is almost done expanding this rewrite draft. Uh, Carrie says, I gave myself till this weekend to finish. I've gone from 10K in my skinny draft to 27K in counting. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll still need to expand more because I'm an underwriter, but I need to move on with this series. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, Naked Acre says, tonight I'm finishing a story that came to me at lunch yesterday in a rush of insight. I stopped eating and started writing and it just won't let me go. <gasps> Those are some of my favorite stories to write. Yes, do not let it go. I love it. I love it. Um, Excellent. Magical escape room for Annie. I love it. HL says, I've been working with an artist on my blog mascot, and it's almost ready to post on my blog. Um, heck yes. Takara, yes. On I want to say on Friday, you finished your murder mystery. Or was it even earlier this week? I saw that you posted about it on Facebook. And you're working on part one of your superhero story. I hope it is just as much fun and it is just as fulfilling as your murder mystery was. I, I'm really excited about it. Um, about that for you. Love it. Mm. Mm. I glossed over this a little bit earlier in the comments, but Sarah is, has a friend who passed away. And so um, says, I'm going to try to gather words around my friend's death to pull a linen cover over her awful loss. Yeah. <sighs> Writing is good for so many things and it won't take away the pain, but it can help you process it. And so I am so sorry. And please know that our hearts are with you. Let's see, Jimmy, need to prep that writing prompt post for our group. Start a big announcement blog post for your book, which is coming and I love it. Answer a couple emails. I wanna write another story. Oh, Jimmy, write a story. <laughs> You have the whole rest of the week for emails and prompts and stuff, right? Am I being a good influence or a bad influence? That's the question. Tan Tania says, I think I'm decompressing from a long week, so I expect to surprise myself on what I end up working on. Good. And Tania, if what you end up working on is a blog post, a journal post, if what you end up working on is just sitting and thinking about this week, um, do what you need to do. Absolutely. Absolutely do what you need to do. All right. All right. 
Nice. Finish the dumplings, pulling up the novel. I love it. Um, I am going to be working on my newsletter for Monday and because I'm, I'm trying to stay ahead of things. Um, so that's what I'm going to be working on tonight. Uh, if you have never done this with us before, again, welcome a million times. I'm so happy you're here. Um, what we do is I'm going to go ahead and put up our little banner here that says that we are writing until 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So it is currently 7.38 p.m. Central. Uh, and so we're gonna write together for about the next hour-ish, uh, more like 50 minutes, um, as it always ends up being, just because there's so many cool people here typing and talking, and um, I wanna know how everyone's doing. Um, but, uh, let's see. The few things I like to say are we were going to be writing until 8.30 p.m. Central. That is 6.30 p.m. Pacific, 7.30 p.m. Mountain, and 9.30 p.m. Eastern. One of those math skills that I'm impressing you with. Um, during this time, if you have a novel that you want to work on, if you want to work on poetry or a short story or a blog post, if you want to get some marketing done, if you want to schedule out your social media posts for the coming week, um, whatever it is you want to do, this is time for you to do something that feels meaningful. Now, if you are burned out, if you are exhausted, if you are depressed, if you are just not feeling the writing today or the creativity today, this is also a time in which you can rest. And by rest, I mean you can literally take a nap if that is what you need. Um, you can also stare at the wall. You can doodle. Um, I've often used this time to write in my journal to do, um, you can see I started, I started a new journal, which I'm really excited about. Um, just do a little bit of uh, processing and self-exploration. You can crochet, you can hold a kitten, like whatever it is you need to do, you are very welcome to do during this time. So, <sighs> should we begin? Should we go ahead and begin? I think we should. All right, we've got our banner up here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is mute myself. Um, if you want to play music or if you want to play like ambient sounds or whatever on your end, if you want to crank up the TV really loud, whatever helps you write, um, go ahead and do that. Uh, it's going to be silent here on my end and, um, oh good, John, it was great to see you. If you, yes, if you have to leave, that's totally fine. Just, just please know that you're always welcome here and that you never have to like feel guilty about leaving in the middle of things. Like this isn't a class and we're not going to like point at you as you go and go, Ooh, um, no, I, I understand that we are all adults and we have difficult schedules. Uh, so yeah, if you need to head out, please know that we love you. We're sending you all the warmth and courage and good energy in the world. Um, but yeah, yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll summon you back at 8.30 p.m. Central Time with the Alpen Horn of Summoning. If you don't know what that is, you will soon. All right, let's get to work.
So, <laughs> if this is your first time in one of our Create Along live streams, that was the Alpen Horn of Summoning, and it serves to gently uh, bring us back <laughs> to our community during our creative sessions. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, a lot of people find it disturbing and horrifying, which just, just makes me laugh. Um, so I hope it wasn't too startling or alarming for you. Um, I also hope that this was a really good time of creation and refreshment uh, and fulfillment for you. So I saw a few people popping into the comments and saying, um, they feel stuck, that they feel drained. Um, there's just, yeah, having, yes, Poxy said, having a dry spell with writing. I've been able to write it all recently. Um, I totally, I totally understand and feel all of that. Yes. And as Rebecca says, I hope you feel unstuck soon. Um, and then we have other people like Hex Theorem who says, I reread something I wrote earlier this year, decided it wasn't awful, and then made a playlist to work to tomorrow. Good night. I love it. Good. Good. Fantastic. Um, let's see. Good. Forsaken Fallen says, Woo, finished an editing pass on this submission finally. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Jimmy says, I think I just wrote a poem, short and not all that good, but something, yay, yay. No, we're just going to stop at yay. You wrote something, Jimmy. It sounds wonderful. And even if it's not wonderful, you still wrote it and you did something good with your time. And, you know, every time we write something, even if it's not the best thing we've ever written, it's still writing and we're still exercising. It's still, you know, a, a workout for our writing muscles. It's it's good for us. It's good for us to build that experience. Um, so you've done very well. I'm very excited for you. Yes, yes. Any art is art nonetheless. Yes. Yeah, yes. Writing poetry is like riding a bike. Like, I don't, I don't think you can forget how to do it because it's, it's just, well, any writing is just putting down words, right? Okay, it's not easy, but it is doable. And I think that it's something that you can't lose. And if you feel like you've lost touch with it, if you if you don't feel like you have access to a poetic part of you anymore, um, I suggest reading some poetry. Um, the I think poetryfoundation.org <clears throat> is one of my favorite websites. There's just a lot of great um, famous and classic poems out there. Um, and it's a really great resource. So yeah. Welcome back, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people got some good stuff done. Um, I want to scroll back up here to... <laughs> Ilana says, I was listening to metal as I wrote, so the horn was more of a question mark to me. I love it. I love it. Ooh, Cass says, I pulled a story engine prompt and then did some journaling, which was refreshing. Good. That sounds really beautiful. Mary says, I made progress on my writing and made a mess of my nails. Sounds about right. <laughs> Maybe I should have thought that out a little better. I'm new to this nail stamping thing, so there is a learning curve. Like, I didn't even know that nail stamping existed, so you're way ahead of me on that one. Um, good. HL says, I got some reading done. Read some friends' creative work, sci-fi podcast episodes, and two newsletters. Sometimes it can be really fun and relaxing to be a reader, like a beta reader or even just a companion reader um, for another creative person. I love that. Another book lover says, I got a few words in. Uh, let's see. I have a zombie of an idea because I had to get something down in a pocket notebook. It's a disgusting little idea. Thank you so much. I love it. <laughs> Ooh, Poxy says, my thing is, I know where I want the story to go. I know what I want to write next, but I just can't bring myself to write it. But lots of good advice was posted in the chat, so I look forward to using said advice. Ooh, good. Yeah, you can also, um, Poxy, I know, I think you're in our Discord. You can also, um, there's a special channel called Writing Probs for writing problems and struggles. Um, and please do feel free to use that as a resource as well. 
Um, yes, Lynette says, hey, Midori. Hey, Adora. <laughs> Sorry, just a little, little She-Ra joke there. Um, oh, night, the night, night, the coward says, I accidentally filled too much of these episodes with emotional angst and not enough aliens. Needs more aliens, but also the angst is good too. The angst is good, uh, good, good story fodder. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Cassandra says, I typed out what I hand wrote last Wednesday and continued writing on my grumpy donkey corn, donkey corn story. Um, it's ridiculously silly, but I kind of love where it's going in a fairy tale fable sort of way. Cassandra, that sounds beautiful. And I hope that this has been a like a, a restful and fulfilling exercise for you, especially as you continue to recover. So absolutely. Skid says, I got some episodes plotted out for one podcast. It still needs a lot of work though. Yep. <laughs> My stuff, like it, they'll always need work and we'll always be there to, to work on them. <laughs> Good. Takara, Got another page done. You're happy because you started writing late today. It feels good to catch up with where we often expect ourselves to be, but it can also be good to forgive ourselves for starting late and to just be very gracious with ourselves and remember that like life gets in the way sometimes. <gasps> Carmen says, progress. I have this habit of writing scenes that aren't exactly connected. Mm -hmm. Then I have to figure out how to put them together. It takes a lot to connect all of it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I totally understand that. Oh, I totally get that. Jimmy says, hashtag needs more aliens. I like that. Um, yes, donkey corn. Love it. <laughs> There's so much love right now for donkey corn. Oh, I love it. That has been like an ongoing, um, it's been an ongoing thing in this group. And it started with, um, Annie has all of these amazing writing prompts. And I think that that's initially uh, where that came from. Mm. Oh, I like this. Another book lover says, and this is quoted from somewhere, so not 100% sure where it comes from. But another book lover says, science is how I understand the universe. Poetry is how I understand my place in the universe. Oh, I really like that. Oh, I really like that. Oh, I love that so much. Oh, I love that so much. There's a reason I use so much um, poetry in Girl in Space, which is the science fiction audio drama that I create. Um, I often have my main character quoting Keats and some other folks. Um, yeah, and, and oh, I love that. Poetry and science just go together so beautifully, right? Okay, anyway, I could talk about that forever, but I won't because other people are saying good things. Alana says, my ice cream parlor brawl brought my scene to where I needed the story to go to end. I'm super excited. I don't know how you guys got me to an ice cream brawl, but thank you. I'm imagining this like a cross between like a food fight and like a bar brawl. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marissa bemoans the translation project. Oof. I'm going to keep it as he wrote it, even if things don't flow plot wise, in my opinion. Right. But as you said, it's not my heart's work. I'll just be a machine and do the best I can with what I'm given. I mean, yeah, like, oh, uh, just please know that I understand. Please know that I understand. Um, I know. I know it's frustrating. But you're doing it, and we're excited for you, and we're here for you. Ooh. Sarah says, I participate in an annual poetry marathon online. It's international and pretty intense. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a poetry marathon. I am learning so much today. <laughs> That's awesome. Annie says, I got last session seen tweaked and refined. Got a good start on the next one. About five pages left to fill in the old notebook. Awesome. And I think I saw that you posted a picture of your new notebook um, over on Discord, which is a great time for me to say, hey, um, come join our Discord. I will, um, I should put like a little, hold on, let me make a little invite for it and I'll put it here in the chat. And let's see, copy. I'm going to paste it.
So if you're not familiar with it, Discord is a, uh, oh my gosh, I just opened, oh no, this is exactly what I want. Okay, oof, oof, struggling, struggling. Okay, I'm sure that that'll work in like 20 minutes. Um, there we go. Discord is a, ah. uh, okay. Oof, 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 gotta mute myself. There we go. Okay. Oh goodness. Technology is so difficult sometimes. Um, good. Siren Whisperer says I got a scene out. Yes. Oh, I got a year old scene out. Oh, I didn't even read that correctly. I've been using tarot cards as a way to pull myself into something. It's been fun assigning meaning to pretty cards with cats. I love that. I have um, my brother-in-law for Christmas. I haven't used these yet, but he got me these little plot thickener cards. And like, I've never, I've never heard of this before, but they're like little cards with like writing prompts on them and stuff. So I don't know. I love little gadgets and stuff that help promote creativity. Um, and I love the idea of using tarot cards. That's really cool. Well, it says, I have a question for everyone. I have letters from a non person, uh, a non point of view character in my first book. I was thinking of posting them to my blog one at a time leading up to the launch of my book. Should I stick to the plan or should I publish them one at a time so anyone who looks at my blog will have something new to read? That is a hard question. And I'm going to ask you a question in return. And what is it that you would want to achieve by posting those letters to your blog versus writing blog posts, teasing your book? So I think, I think it's going to be more, um, what do you want to accomplish? And is that the correct way to accomplish it? Um, <laughs> oh, good. Mike says, I rewrote the narrative beginning of episode one of this side horror series. I love it. Good. <laughs> good. Liz says, stop and go writing tonight. Yeah, I feel that. Somehow lost the flow and energy, but plugging away to get the words down. I'll put them in order later when I edit. Yes. Just, just get the words out there. Just put them on the page. That's what editing is for. Oh, I feel that so much. I feel that so much. Liliana says, I wrote a few pages, but then started having a million crazy ideas about people who aren't you and assumed they are. An island on a river and a fake tracking device that I just had to work on my outline so I could plan out all these wonderful things. Oh, that sounds so rich and exciting. I love putting fun twists and details into the story. And so I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, Liz, thank you. Liz says, this time together is supremely helpful to me. Thank you all for just showing up tonight. Same, same. You show up for yourselves. And that brings me so much joy. That brings me so much joy. Um, oh, yes, thank you. This is our Discord link. Um, those of you who are manually typing in, I saw that a few people had to head out. Mike, it's been great to see you. Those of you who have had to head out, you're wonderful. Keep writing. <laughs> All good. Melissa says, thank you, everyone. I do feel a bit lighter now. I love it. Ooh. Rebellious Comet says, I did a big old brainstorm and I have a baby seed of an idea. I love it. Brainstorming is so much fun. Um, good. Just letting those ideas run rampant. Um, <laughs> and miss the horn. That's okay. <laughs> I also set like a little alarm. Um, I have a little thing on my watch for 827. And so like when my watch goes off, like I know to like save what I'm doing and like get the file up that plays the Alpen horn and like return uh, return to the to the you beautiful people here. <laughs> mm. Tania, Tania, Tania. Yes, Tania says tonight I discovered I just needed to sit with a hot cup of tea in my very cold studio and take stock in where I am in the busy work of creating a writing career. Master to-do list and website planning tonight. Good. Oh, I think that my own writing career has sort of taken place one cup of tea at a time. Um, and giving yourself, like you said even earlier, the time and the space to process and allow yourself that processing is so important. And I'm so glad, 
I'm so glad you did that. I'm so glad you did that. And thank you for sharing with us that that is what you did and what you needed to do, Tania. Um, it's just so nice to have you here in this group. Jimmy, yes. Uh, Jimmy has a book coming out, everyone. Jimmy wrote a book and, and, and started and finished creating this book um, during our live streams, which is so cool. So Jimmy says, hey, did you know that someone right here in this very channel has a book of poetry that comes out in just a few days and that the poetry is about creep adorable monsters and there's art and everything? I mean, I heard things. Um, yes, Jimmy has a book coming out. Uh, Jimmy, will you... Uh, good. Okay. Cassandra says that, uh, Cassandra says I pre-ordered it today. Good. Good. Augie says just a few days. Oh, I love this. I love it when I see other people getting excited about and supporting other writers work. I love it. I live for it. Um, so thank you for supporting and loving each other. This is really cool. Ooh, Takara says my superhero story takes place in the year 2037. So it's like, it's not just superheroes, but it's futuristic. Oh, that's going to be so much fun, Takara. Oh, I love it. Good. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Um, okay, geez, I am very behind. <laughs> oh, I'm very behind. Okay, I'm trying to catch up here. Ooh. Megra says, I discovered that one of my characters is a reformed dark elf. She now owns a vintage clothing antique shop and is an upstanding citizen type, carefully hiding from her, hiding her past from all. I love that. I love that. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Oh, I just love this. Okay. Um, let's see. Yes. Okay. So we've got a few people. Um, Anne's book is here at books com. the spirit of creativity. Um, Jimmy, also, do you have your link for your book that I can share here? I would love to do that. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you for your lovely words and inspiration in your newsletter. Thank you for reading it. Um, I, I started writing Mondays tonight during our, uh, during our create along and it's, it's hefty. It's, it, I, I couldn't even finish it in the hour that I spent writing it. Um, it's on a really big subject and I don't, I had an idea of where I wanted it to go and it like did not naturally go there. So I think I'm going to have to do a little bit more wrestling with it, but you'll have that to look forward to on Monday. Um, <gasps> Oh, for what? For real? Poxy, is this a real thing that can happen? A Twitch bot? Oh, heck. Okay. Yes. Um, I want to think about that. Oh, good night, Lynette. Um, it was great having you. It was great seeing you. Um, yeah. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Um, yes, please link the book info, Jimmy. I'm looking at you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Okay, Augie is linking it here. It's Amazon.com, and the name of the book is One Hungry Werewolf, Monstrous Rhymes, and it's by Jimmy. And so, um, yeah, go ahead and pre-order it. What? Okay, I know I shouldn't be, like, shilling other people's uh, stuff here in the chat. Um, oh, and I just got a message uh, from my partner, Tim, here, who's trying to help me stay on top of things. Um, oh, okay. And Jimmy says, just to note about the book, the link right now is for the ebook pre-order. If you hold that link until Sunday, you can get the print copy or the ebook. And so I guess just be aware of which one you are ordering and pre-ordering. And um Augie uh says, waiting on a print copy. Are you giving out signed copies? Um which I have also asked for, by the way, and I told Jimmy to charge money for them, like extra money for them, because Jimmy is trying to um, quit his job and become a full-time writer. And so I am very much, uh, I, want, I want all you writers to make lots of money, okay? <laughs> so, so yes, 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 good, okay. Fantastic. And Jimmy is making those signed editions happen. I love it. Uh, 
yes. Those of you who write and publish books, um, let us know about them. Like, obviously, I don't want this to become like a sales place. Like, you know, I don't want people to come in here like spamming, like buy my book, buy my book. But like, you know, if if you're working on something during these create alongs and you finish it and you publish it, like, it's really cool to know that and to know that like we were in some small way like a part of of that process for you. So, so yeah. <sighs> we are coming up on the two hour mark. See, I'm getting good at this. I'm getting, I'm getting good at like realizing what time it is. Um, yes, Knight the Coward just really, um, oops, sorry, clicked on the wrong thing. Knight the Coward said it's really exciting to share in the excitement. Yes. Yes, I love that. <laughs> okay, and Megaris is not related to anything, but I just looked over in my room and found my cat just creepily staring at me. Not sure if it's about to become a cuddly animal or horror novel situation. That goes right back to like Jimmy's, what did you call it, Jimmy? Creep adorable? Or do, cre yes, creep adorable, creep adorable, adorable, creepy. Like they just, they go together so nicely. <laughs> and yeah, Jimmy says, why not both? <laughs> Yes, Augie also has a book. It's a collection of short horror stories. Um, ooh, not selling physical copies right now, but it's available as an audiobook. What's it called, Augie? <laughs> yes, and Takara, your book's coming out in May. I love it. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Yes, ice cream then bedtime soon. I also can just like feel my brain starting to wind down. So I think I'm also going to start winding down. Oh, okay. But real quick, um, Augie's book is called Night Vision. There's the audiobook link. It's out on Bandcamp. Um, so do go check that out. Augie has been such a presence and such a um, just a supporter of this group and other writers and the same with Jimmy and the same with Marissa and the same with everyone. I think I said Marissa, even though I don't know if you have a book out. Um, so I apologize if I like called you out and did not mean to. Um, we'll just blame it on the fact that it's late and I need to go to bed. Um, but I do want to say thank you each and every one of you for being here. Your presence here is a gift. This community would not be anything without you. And so I'm so glad that you show up. I was going to say every week, but it's like kind of twice a week. Um, I love that you show up when you can and you make this space brighter and more hopeful and more exciting for so many writers in addition to yourself. And so thank you for being here. Thank you for being bright lights and for shining and for all of that good stuff. Um, we will be doing this again on Friday. So do come join us. And again, if you're, if you're ever not able to like make one of these, or if you just stop coming all together, it's totally okay. Nobody holds anything against you. Um, but it is, it is really cool when you are here. Um, so yeah. What else do I want to say before we sign off? Yes, we are doing this again on Friday, 7 p.m. Central. And then again, every Wednesday and Friday here on Facebook, here in Twitch. I found that people prefer Twitch a little bit more because it's a little bit less laggy and a little bit more stable. Um, but for wherever it's most accessible for you to join us, um, I just encourage you to use whatever is best. Um, yes, I want you all to, well, for those of you who are not in Australia, I know Rebecca and our friends here in the future, um, <laughs> uh, you're already in tomorrow. But for those of you where it's still night, I hope you have a great and restful night. Um, all you wonderful Australians, I hope you're having an amazing day. And I will see you all on Friday. All right. Until then, happy writing, happy creating, and come hang out in our Discord. All right. Oh. Did I put up my, oh, I did. I even put up the right card. Okay. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>